needing a whole new generation of engineers and miners for that <laughs> one, actually. But the most important thing is I made sure you can breathe. It's kind of cold down here, right? And that's because I put in an air shaft on both sides. The mine's an L shape, which is an old Spanish technique that they've been using forever that improves automatic ventilation without fans. The guy that has this mine, his family has lived in Virginia City since the 1800s. Seven generations of their family up here. Mm -hmm. And he really knows what he's doing. So what he did is the mine used to be back behind the building, and it used to go straight down 55 stories. But he knew that that was too dangerous. So he sealed off the, uh, the back of the mine to the five-story level on purpose so that he can make the air flow better. He put in this back door that you're all standing in right now in the 1960s so that it also helps the air flow. And when you have an L-shaped mine, it constantly flows the air from one side to the other. You can feel it right now, but it costs a lot of money, and that's why I charge you. It's not just because I'm a jerk, okay? <laughs> There's a process, and we put in a lot of work to make sure that this is all safe for you. Do you have any questions about safety stuff before we go further in here? No. That's what I like to hear. As we get in further, it is going to get a little bit smaller because it's going backwards in history. So watch your head. The seven dwarves in Snow White, they were miners, right? There's a reason for that. It's because <laughs> they were little short guys. <laughs> so you guys, you get the laugh of your head. So this stuff, when you put it all together, it kind of means to winch like an elevator. It's called a winds. The younger miner jumps in a metal bucket I have on the left side of the room, just barely sticking out of the ground a little bit. And we seal that hole that's below it so none of our young ones escape from us and live like miners. But you get the idea. This equipment on the right is the hoisting drum that pulls you out of the ground, kind of like an early elevator. And when they started, they only had regular hemp rope and chain. They didn't have cable invented for this side of the world yet. Cable was invented in Germany, but they didn't want to share with anybody. So when you look into cable, it was technically one of the inventions that was different people, different places. And Western America got it from a guy named Andrew Holliday, same person that they did the cable car thing out in San Francisco. He was out here in Virginia City first, and he made a ribbon cable that's actually like a flat cable right down there. They can hold 20,000 pounds. Saved a lot of lives. 10 tons is a lot, right? So that's what got him the credibility to do the cable car 10 years later. He helped inspire ski lifts, and he also got to be friends with another engineer named Elijah Otis. Otis Elevators, they tested some of the first ones up here metal cage that I took your money from out there was actually one of the first models from the 1800s, that big metal cage up there in the front. And he didn't invent them here, but he brought them out here very quickly because he realized that we had deep mines and we had really awesome cable. We also invented the thing, the Ferris wheel. Have you guys been on a Ferris wheel before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big wheels at the fairs that go all around. And those are really cool. He invented those here because he was a kid their age living down in Carson City and he used to watch all the water wheels in the river turning every day and he thought if I put a chair on that wheel that would be kind of fun to ride, right? I hope he didn't waterboard people in the beginning, <laughs> but he took it to the Chicago World Fair a little bit later on and that gets a little confusing, but he invented most of it here in Nevada. He also invented blue jeans, Levi's. Levi Strauss was out of San Francisco as a company, but they had a partner out here in Reno named Davis. And Davis's job was to make clothes better so the miners could keep on going down into volcanic temperatures. And he's the one that invented blue jeans, and then the company patented a few years later. Nowadays, the patent fell through, so we all wear variations of blue jeans. <laughs> But we also brought in cool things from other places, and we got to test them here like it was a big laboratory experiment because there were a lot of people living here, and they were trying new things. Dynamite is my favorite, but on the way back to dynamite, I'm also going to show you black light, which makes rocks look like they're glowing in the dark. It's called fluorescence. So it's a little dark right there, 
but it's because I have all those glow-in-the-dark rocks. It's really cool, okay? So make sure that you keep your eyes open because it's easy to pass by, but you're going to see a lot of cool color right up ahead of us. Okay, you look good, kid. I found most of that in my backyard. When you walk by, if you pull out a cell phone flashlight, you can actually lose most of that color. So it's all just a $50 black light that I set up right above the rocks that make them look like they're glowing like that. It's just about having high grade equipment. You get a low grade black light, it doesn't work as good as this. But this one right here is actually pretty powerful, so it gives you a lot of cool colors. <laughs> Yeah, they actually figured out how to do that with just candles and violet screens on them in 1852. It was 30 years before they invented light bulbs. They figured out that if you just isolate violet colors, it'll mix a little bit with ultraviolet, and you can see some of those colors if it's dark enough. But remember, low-grade energy, just a little bit of color. If you get high-grade energy, you bring out more color. But that stuff is all over the world. Calcite, that white little stuff that grows in our kitchen sink and you have to scrub it away for your chores, that's actually stuff I got all over the mine, all over the wall right here. And when you shine a normal black light on it, a $5 black light from Walmart is really low energy too. It doesn't show you any colors until you make it super dark. When you make it dark, you can start to see all the green colors, right? Isn't that cool? And remember, if you get a $5 black light from Walmart, you can find a little bit of color if you make it super dark. But if you get a powerful black light like that one, you can find rocks like that in your backyard. Mm -hmm. But it's all about knowing how to do it. And they knew how to do it seven years before they got to our town. 30 years before they invented light bulbs. They figured it out in England. George Stokes, Father of Aerodynamics, knew all that stuff. But... Dynamite was invented after they'd been working in our town for a long time. Dynamite is different than explosive that was powder form. Black powder, gunpowder, is really dangerous. That powder can rub on itself and the friction gets it to explode, so it's really unstable. If you drop it or bump into it, or if you look at it wrong, TNT will explode. So you don't use it very much underground. You, you started using dynamite more because it was a gel type of explosive. It was a lot safer than powder was. Do you know who invented dynamite? He's a very famous person from Sweden. They brought it up here about 1872 from Europe. Alfred Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize. Same guy invented dynamite 30 years before he did the Peace Prize, and he didn't want you to remember that their family were all explosive experts, but they were. But he's always been interested in safety. The whole point of making dynamite was to make it safe enough for them to use it underground. But remember, jackhammer steam drills back then were so expensive and dangerous that you could only get one of these if you owned one of the really big companies. Most people couldn't get them. It was only a few of these people. Most of the guys had to do it with hammers and chisels. So before dynamite was invented, it was pickaxe and shovel. This mine that you're in, the back door that you walked through was built when we had dynamite, but the back room that we're in right here is actually eight years before they had dynamite. It used to go right through the wall behind me, and this mine used to drop down 55 stories, and it was done completely with pickaxe and shovel, all right? So when they got dynamite, that's what got them down the deeper, way faster. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, very different time frame. <laughs> yes. But remember, when you want to do most of your work with dynamite, one guy has to hold a chisel and the other guy hits it really super hard with a sledgehammer. It's kind of loud, so I'm just going to tap it to give you guys the idea, okay? So even when you tap it, it's pretty loud, right? So you got to be really careful. Hearing loss, nerve damage, trauma. The only good thing is that if we miss and hit each other, you wait 15 minutes, we switch, and then you hit me back, okay? <laughs> but they also did it totally drunk. The groundwater is all mixed up with arsenic. It's toxic, so they couldn't really drink it or use it for much of anything. 
We eventually built a giant pipeline from the Tahoe area, but it cost $2.2 million in the 1800s. They didn't have it until the very end. So for a long time, water was so hard to find that they sold it for eight times more expensive than whiskey was. They drank bottles of whiskey down here instead of bottles of water. And they were actually swinging that hammer at each other. Well, you're so drunk you can't see. <laughs> nice. Mark Twain used to say that in Virginia City, we don't have a town drunk. We have a drunk town. <laughs> and he was right. Mark Twain, the guy that wrote Tom Sawyer, he actually used to live right up the street from us. We had a lot of famous people that used to live here. But what's really crazy is that they had to do all this in the dark. Candles were all they had. Electricity wasn't invented yet, and all the other alternatives were a little bit too un, uh, unwilling to work with this environment. So before we leave, I'm going to show you candles over here. It's going to be kind of dark. So what I do is I leave all the lights in the hallway on. If you guys really can't do with the dark, then you can stand here in the hallway and you can still see all the light. But if you want to see what these miners were actually working in, I'm going to show you candles over here before we leave. It's also under my air shaft. So I got that uh, system that goes all the way to the top of the mine right here in front of the candles. You guys are standing five stories underground right now. And if you don't believe me, just stand right in front of the candle and you'll see a bunch of ladders that go up to the top of the mine. It's really cool. <laughs> Just remember, too, when you're standing under this hole, five stories is almost nothing. The deeper mines in our area were normally 10 to 70 times deeper than this hole. We're five stories. The other ones were between 320 uh, stories and 350 stories. So this is just the taste of what they were going into. And when they did it, it was all with candles. Electricity was invented later. Carbide lamps, the acetylene tools, were not invented until the 1890s, way later in history. Uh, uh, the kerosene oil, kerosene was way too flammable. So with all the wood they had to use down here, they couldn't use kerosene at all. So when you swing around that hammer and you're super drunk, they had to do it like this. I'm going to turn out the lights for a second, okay? This is all they had. And remember, this candle is actually really bright because we're standing underneath sunshine right here with our air shaft. So with lots of air, we get lots of fire, right? But when you go down deeper, you get less air and you get less fire. So it looks a little more like this. <laughs> and if you hit poison gas, that fire goes out completely and it goes totally pitch black and you have to learn how to feel your way out of the mines because that candle needs so much air, it'll actually go out pretty much the second you touch poison gases. So the miners had to learn how to do that and stay calm. Can I show you what it looks like without any light for just a couple seconds? Yep. Yeah. So I promise I got a light switch right here, okay? I'm just gonna do it for a moment. And um, to make sure that we do it correctly, make sure that all of our electronic stuff is turned off because we'll be able to see any glow from anything. So make sure that your cell phones and your glow-in-the-dark watches and all that stuff is all put away for just a quick moment, and I can show you what it looks like. If you hit poison gas, you learn to appreciate the candle a whole lot better because all of the light disappears. We'll be able to see your uh, cell phone even back there. So if you don't mind, maybe cover up the front of it so that you can get it really dark. Oh, sorry. And then um, if you're looking my direction, it'll be true darkness. If you look back at them, they're going to leave their cell phones on, it looks like. So you'll be able to see some light still. Are you all ready? One, two, three. Can you see your hand in front of your face anymore? No. Nope. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah.